Hello, boys and girls. Today we're going to do lesson four of Colonial Towns and Colonial People. Listen carefully to today's read aloud to find out about four different tradespeople during the colonial times who made different types of clothing. Let's go over our vocabulary words. The first vocabulary word is garments. Pieces are articles of clothing, garments. The next vocabulary word is loom. A machine for weaving yarn or thread into cloth, loom. Here's our next vocabulary word, spindles. Small wooden tools used for spinning fibers into thread spindles. Here's our next word, spinners. Tradespeople who twist cotton, flax, wool into thread and yarn using a spinning wheel. Spinners. Our last vocabulary word is weavers. Tradespeople who make cloth from thread or yarn by weaving the strands together on a loom, weavers. Let's start our um, read aloud. The cloth makers, spinners, and weavers. Several hundred years ago, farmers made their own cloth from materials they gathered from the fa farms. Most farmers shared wool from sheep they raised on their farms. On a few farms where cotton was grown, farmers picked cotton from cotton plants that grew in their fields. Farmers' wives cleaned, combed, dyed, and spun this cotton or wool into thread before weaving it into cloth. But this took a lot of time. So if they had several garments to make, they would give their cotton or wool to tradespeople who made cloth for them. Today, we will learn about spinners and weavers, two types of trade people in town who had tools that helped them make more cloth at one time than a farmer and his family can make by themselves. Many farmers use wool of sheep to make cloth. Once, once a sheep's coat was thick, farmers would shave or shear off the wool with a sharp blade. The wool grew back and the sheep were ready to be sheared again the following spring. Let's take a close look at cotton. A plant grown on farms in the southern colonies along the coast. The cotton first had to be planted and then handpicked from the plant. A cotton ball is the seed pod of the cotton plant. Farmers pluck the white string like cotton fibers found inside the cotton ball. The stalk of another plant called flax could also be picked apart into fibers that could be made into cloth called linen. Whether cotton or flax, farmers needed to clean the fibers to remove the seeds and dirt from these plant parts before using them to make cotton. The first step in making making cloth is to make the cotton, flax, or wool into thread. In this picture are some tools the farmer had to add at home that would help him to do this. After the cotton, flax, or wool was cleaned, it had to be combed with a tool called a carter. As you can see from this picture, Hand carters look similar to a cat or dog's brush. Women would use two carters 
at a time to brush the wool until all the fibers lined up in the same direction. Once the fiber was combed, the woman might dye the cotton or wool different colors using the juice from different plants or berries. They dip the cotton or wool in the dye, allowing it to soak up the colorful juices. Dyeing was hard work and took a long time, so farmers usually skip this step. If they were making cloth at home, that's one reason why the clothing sewed at home from cloth made on the farm in those days was so plain. Usually just a whitish beige color. It was a rare treat to buy colorful cloth in town. Next woman making their own cl um, clothes at home used small wooden spindles like this one to twist and clean fibers into thread. Woman turned the spindle by hand to make yarn that was much stronger than a single fiber of cotton flax or wool. Here's the spindle and here's the carter. If a farmer could afford it, he would buy a spinning wheel like this one for his wife. The spinning wheel allowed a woman to turn cotton, flax, wool fibers into yarn or thread by spinning them together very tightly. A spinning wheel could spin wool into thread much more quickly than a hand spindle. In rare cases, when a farmer was very wealthy or lived near a large town, he would buy thread from a spinner. A tradesperson who turned cotton, flax, or wool into thread using a spinning wheel. The spinning wheel not only has a spindle attached to it, but it also has a big wheel with a foot pedal called a thrindle. The spinner would step on the um, treadle to make the big wheel spin. This was called threading. See how the thread between the woman's finger, a hand, and the spindle have been spun into thread? It is ready to collect on the spindle. A large spinning wheel turned the spindle around quickly, allowing the spinner to make a lot of thread or yarn in one day. One way the farmers and their families would save time was to buy yarn or thread from the spinner and then weave this thread into cloth by hand at home. Or they wanted to save even more time or effort they would visit another trades person, a weaver, to make the cloth for them. After the spinner made the yarn or thread, the weaver took over. The weaver's job was to weave yarn or thread into cloth. If you look at the cloth on clothing you are wearing right now, you'll see that the cloth is actually made up of lots of rows and threads. Just like in this picture, some of these rows go up and some of these rows go down, others go across. To do this, the weaver use a tool called a loom. A typical loom had pedals that the weaver used to control the machine parts. The weaver used a special piece called a shuttle to carry the strings part back and forth from one side of the loom to the other. The newly made cloth was rolled up on the bolt underneath the loom. Today, cloth is made in factories by machines, but these machines spin and weave just like the tradespeople did a long time ago. So now you know how cotton, flux, wool were woven into cloth by hand 
years ago, both at home, by the spinners and weavers in town. Here are some questions to answer to a grown-up. What is this story mostly about? What is the main idea? What is it mostly about? What plants could be used to make cotton? Um, cloth. What animal also provided materials for cloth? What is the tool that looks like a cat or a dog brush that the farmers use to brush the cotton, flux, or wool into straight fibers? Did farmers' wives often make colorful cloth at home? Why or why not? 